Hello. What I'm going to do today with this video is about is how to install a sub panel in the existing existing structure. Um, what I'm going to do is be showing you how to wire up a sub panel. There's a main panel here. Here's a sub panel that we're going to be putting in. Now, this is going to be this is an actual home. Uh, the panel's live over there. I pulled the face off of it just to give a high altitude flyover of how a house is wired in the main panel. Uh, the wire required to go over to the sub panel. Some do's and don'ts and safety involved with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over just the basics of um, the parts of wiring in a main panel. Uh, the items required to tie in between the main and the sub panel. And uh, just show you some of the components. Now this whole project came about because the existing panel in, in this house is full. All the breakers have been used. Now I've pulled off the main panel right here. And you can see, put it back on there. there. Everything is filled in. There's no other spaces. I also let whomever's watching this video know that this is a live panel. There's power coming in, lights are on in the house. If you are, some, some safety concerns right here. If you don't know what you're doing, if you've never wired before, this is not a project to begin on. If you're unsure of your own abilities, um, if you're concerned or worried about what you're doing, pay the money, have a professional come in, uh, or contact the county. I've got, for this project, I've contacted the county. I have approval and know what I'm doing, and this is probably one of the better places for letting the county uh, government agencies get involved because they're going to come back and they're in the end going to be responsible for the safety. They're going to be the ones checking it out, make sure the wiring is up to snuff and that you're safe. Vice, you doing it, um, putting it together, and then being an issue down the road. Understand, any wiring you do in your own home that's not approved gives an out for the insurance company if there's an issue in the future. Also, any homeowner that buys after you could come back after you uh, if they realize, find out later, that how the wiring's been modified and there was a problem. So, okay, like I said, we got the county on board with us. There's the permit for it. Now, just a quick breakdown of what we're looking at. Homes are wired, the average house is wired for 240 volts. Uh, there's two 120 volt buses that singularly make 120 volt and when they're crossed over make 240 volts. You'll notice if you look in here, you'll see two black wires. You'll also notice that I'm using a wooden dowel to point with. Keep your fingers away from the panel, away from wiring when it's energized. Always assume the wire is carrying current until you've absolutely proven otherwise. And there's various means, multimeters, um, and sensors that you can buy at your home improvement store that can let you know whether it's power and panel. I have a few of them that I use, but I'm not going to drag this off right now. If you notice, there's two hots. Here's one hot. Here's one another hot. Four wires come into the average home. There are two hots, what's called a grounded conductor and a grounding conductor. But there's the two hots right here. They power up separate 120 volt sides. If you cross, cross the two of them, you get 240 volts. Here's the individual wires going off to the loads in the house, wiring, uh, refrigerators, and so forth. You'll notice double pole breakers in here. Here, here. These are, and also here, air conditioning, oven, dryer. Those just require 240 volts. Why are some things have 240 volts by 120? Because the higher the voltage, the less current is pulled. So if you, can, if you want to bump the voltage up, if you want for a motor to carry 240 volts because it will pull less current, that means a smaller breaker and less chance of a fire. Once the wire comes in, you can see the wiring actually comes in the back of this panel. It's hard to see that. The wire comes in, it's from the uh, power company, splits into two lines here, hot, hot. The silver wire that you see is called uh, the ground bed conductor. Also on the back side there, there are wires for the grounding conductor. What's the difference? The ground dead conductor is normally your white wire that if you ever open up a junction box, you'll see a white wire in there. 
That's the, called the neutral wire. Don't let that term confuse you because neutral is still carrying a potential. Because it's the wire that's used to carry power back from the hots back to the source. The ground dead wire, which is, if you look in there, you'll see all these copper, all this copper is going to various house loads, it's hooked up to the ground dead wire, it's hooked up to this wire right here. And that goes out of the house and is driven to a metal rod that goes to the earth. It's designed to carry any stray currents that happen to come due to a fault safely away from the individual and the object to the earth outside. And also in doing so, it's more than likely going to trip the breaker and let you know you've got a problem. If a breaker trips once, there is a chance that you, sh you can reclose. If a breaker ever trips twice, do not reclose it again until you find out what's going on. So that's, that's a quick run over. And in terms of what you're doing, how you get 120 and 220 volts, this is your center lead. This is the voltage, AC current wave that's coming into your house. Back and forth. Between here and here, it's 120 volts. Between here and here is 240 volts. So, when the electrician wires up the house, and he connects between one side and the ground. One side, it was just one side and neutral, uh, and excuse me, neutral, the white wires you see here, you're getting 120 volts. When he connects across both sides, both hots, you notice these breakers are larger, they're bigger. Here's an example of one right here. You notice that it's called a two pole breaker. It's wider because what it's doing is it's jumping across both of these buses and you're now getting 240 volts. You look here in the sub panel, you can now see the guts of what a panel looks like. This panel is the same as that panel, it's just it's 120 amp device or 200 amp service. And here you can see the neutral, the grounded, or grounding, excuse me, and these are hot leads. This is these white wires, these silver uh, contacts here, it's the same as the doubles wires coming in there. A wire is going to come in, connect to here. Another wire from there is going to come over, come in the box, connect to here. We're just going to power up. Notice that this one is connected to every other. This one is connected to every other. And there's a space in between. And what these breakers do is they're going to span that gap. For 240 volts, it's going to tie two of these together. That's what you're going to with. That's how you get 240 volts out of the circuit. Remember, into the sub panel, you're going to have to get a four lead wire. The same thing's going to come in. You're going to be carrying, in here I've got four wires, I've got two hots, I've got a neutral, and I've got a ground lead wire. Don't let that phrase confuse you. Ground dead and neutral, ground dean and the green wire, or ground wire, are the, are the same thing. So for here, this happens to be an 8 gauge wire that's coming in. You're going to need something of this heft to carry the amount of current that's going to be pulled on here. And the reason we're doing this is this air compressor is being installed. As I said earlier, we're out of room. There's nothing left in here. This power panel can be powered up by one of these breakers. So I'm going to still, I'm going to have to clean up one spot in here. So in other words, I'm going to have to find some loads that are not being used at this time that I can clean up. And what we're going to be doing is there's a shed out back that was never powered up and an intercom circuit that's in here that was never turned on when the house was built 20 years ago. So I'm simply going to jostle those breakers around and open up a spot that I can put a power feed from here, coming down, out, over, and wires going to come in here. I'm going to then hook up this other pole breaker into here, feed wires from here, make up, excuse me, make an outlet, run it over to an outlet, and then wire up the compressor 240 volts in here. So that's the gist of it. Um, that's how it works. That's what you're dealing with. And again, just be very careful. Uh, during the main, any type of touching in here, uh, final contacts, just go ahead and kill the main power supply. You can deal with it, it's just like having power go off during a storm. Just open it up, 
get your ties to tie in and you can close the breaker back. My suggestion is that you install this as close as you can to the main panel. And remember there's differences depending on whether you install this in the main building with that panel. If it goes over to another building, there are different criteria that involved there. Pick a location is I'm sort of tall, so for me, right here is going to be convenient. Do your wiring in here. Put the main feeder in here. Come it back out, bore through the walls instead of going to be going through these studs, boring behind the freezer. Come it back up in here. Have the wire ready. I'll have uh, all my wiring done in here for the compressor. I'll always have, this is easier. Do it while it's not energized, it's safer. Go ahead and you can touch everything, you're not going to hurt yourself. So do all your wiring that you can in here. Get the compressor wired up, get the front panel back on. Uh, and the secure system to be up on the wall. Get all that done, get it all over there. I wouldn't plug it in yet. And then do your final connections. Once that's all said and done, make sure you're good to go. You don't have anything grounded, nothing touching. And also contact the, your county to find out at what point you need an inspection to be done. Some counties require the wires still be non, not, not uh, landed yet. Uh, others, you can wire the whole thing up and be good to go. They just need to come out and stamp it. So make sure you're clear on that so you don't have to do any unwiring of stuff. And like I say, for your last lead, wires will be coming up here. Find a convenient knockout that makes sense. Remember, that 8-gauge wire is hefty and it takes a lot to bend it. It's not like a 14-gauge or 12-gauge wire. So make it convenient. Whatever side you're going to be doing the thieves on, have it come in on that side. All right? It's going to have to come in the bottom here. As you can see, it's really busy down here right now. I just have to find a, uh, a knockout. I'll be bringing it up in there, and then uh, landing. Like I said, these will be cleared up. These are either pull out. And at the very end, I'll land the wire and be done. So that's the gist of it. And we'll come back, and I'll show you what it looks like uh, wired up.